Isn't my vote personal? Well, that very much depends on what we mean by personal. We have coming up here relatively soon, as I record, another election. Uh, one third of our senators will be uh, elected. All of our members of the House of Representatives will have elections. And of course, the president uh, will also have an election. And as per usual, we have people on every side uh, insisting that uh, the sky is falling if our guy doesn't win. Now, it's not my calling here or my desire to make a case one way or another about for whom a body should vote. Instead, I want to explore this idea of whether or not our vote is personal. It is personal in the sense that uh, no one necessarily needs to know how you voted. I have no quarrel whatsoever with the curtain that goes around uh, the voting booth. I have no quarrel with uh, unmarked ballots that you know don't include our name. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and so in that sense, it is personal. But it's easy to conflate that kind of personalness with the idea that I can separate my vote from the implications that it has for everyone else. My father didn't invent this phrase, but he loved to use it. He would remind people that the ballot is a bullet. The ballot is a bullet. That is, when we go and vote, we are choosing particular people to serve in particular offices, which offices enact and enforce laws by force. Again, that's not a bad thing. That's what government is for. It's supposed to do that. But it should very much give us some, well, some restraint in how we vote. It's one thing for me to say, you know, I really wish uh, everyone would root for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I, I wish the Steelers would have the first uh, 25 draft picks of every season. I wish the Steelers could have the pick of their schedule and who they play, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One thing to say, I wish that. It's another thing to say, I believe this should be made law. It's one thing to say, I wish people didn't smoke cigarettes. It's another thing to say, I believe that the full force and power of the government should be... Uh, used to require people not to smoke cigarettes. You see the difference there. And what we have to remember, again, when we go into that booth is the nature of what we're doing. We're asking for things to be done. There's a very real sense in which I take uh, comfort when my guy doesn't win, whoever my guy may be, because if my guy won, I'd feel responsible for all the things that he did. I feel responsible for every tax that he levied, every unjust war that he waged, every failure to protect the unborn. That would weigh on me if I put that guy in office. Again, what I'm trying to say is it's very important. It matters. It's easy for us to miss that on the basis of the numbers. Oh, there's millions of people voting. My vote is, you know, 0.0001% of the vote. It doesn't really matter. There's not a dime's worth of difference between the parties. That I'm sympathetic to. Uh, but nevertheless, it does matter. It does make a difference. And it makes a difference outside of me. My choice, my private decision inside that booth has implications in the lives of other people. That should, across the board, give us a deeper push for less government. If we remember what we're doing, that we're forcing our neighbors to do this or to do that, to take their money to pay for this or to pay for that, to require them to do this or to do that, yeah, that's a scary thought. So, when you go in, you'll go in alone. 
but I hope you'll remember what you learned.